There's major news for our community. Voters will decide on two levies this winter to support students. Amanda Richter and Tara Cox will explain them both. Plus, Nick Vole takes us back to the dark ages. Let's go inside Vancouver Public Schools. Live it up, live it up, live it up. Hello and welcome inside Vancouver Public Schools. I'm Colleen Jamison. We have a lot of important stuff for you today and some slightly less important stuff too. But first, let's get going with our top three. These are our top three social media posts of the week. Our number three comes from Chris Gennati, the principal at Felida Elementary School. Her staff and students put up an inspirational board full of notes to inspire and uplift someone in need. Students can just grab a post with a message of support. What a cool idea. Our number two comes from Vancouver Flex Academy. Students at this magnet program took part in the Walk and Knock campaign put on by Clark County Food Bank. Students gathered canned items and dried items to support those in need. And that brings us to our number one. Along those same lines, Leeser School Principal Deanna Hogan posted this picture before Thanksgiving. Staff and families at Leeser gathered Thanksgiving dinner supplies for more than 20 families. Leeser is home to a number of alternative programs like Vancouver Home Connections and others, so it's especially inspiring to see people come together to support families they may not even know personally. Nice work, Ocelot. In February, Vancouver voters will be asked to pass two levies to support local students. There are a lot of numbers and a lot of things have changed when it comes to school funding, so we're going to break it all down for you. The first is an education and operations levy. It pays for basic programs and services, things like teacher salaries, classroom supplies, sports, music, special education, and more. The second is a technology levy. It pays for classroom tech like tablets, computers, and also teacher training. Training. Neither of these levies are new. They're replacing current levies, which are going to expire. Let's take a longer look at the Education and Operations Levy, or E&O. Amanda Richter joins us now with the details. Amanda? The recent McCleary decision from the Washington Supreme Court resulted in more money coming from the state, but it still only funds about 78% of the district's budget. That's where the Education and Operations Levy comes in. Here's a list of just some of what it pays for. These things are everyday expenses, things that make schools better places to learn for students. It includes teacher and staff salaries and more, and it has a major impact on class sizes. The state funds 28.7 students per teacher at the high school level, so anytime you see a class size that's lower than that, you know that it's education and operations levy that's providing for that lower class size to meet the unique needs of that student group. As you may have noticed, the levy pays for things that our community expects of its schools. Here are some examples. The state only pays for about four safety and security and nursing positions for the entire district. VPS has 37 buildings with students, so it uses levy funds to boost staffing. When it comes to services for students with special needs, the state funding falls about $4 million short of the legal requirement. Without a levy, we would really, really have to cut other programs just to meet those legal obligations. The levy also pays for non-academic programs that help students find success in the classroom. Anytime you talk about athletics or band or some of our knowledge bowl, um, debate team, those are all um, exclusively funded by the education and operations levy. And those are things we've heard from our community that they value greatly for, for their students as well as their own entertainment and, and appreciation. Um, the state provides zero dollars for those activities. So what is the rate, especially now with the change to the state formula? The levy will cost $1.50 per $1,000 of assessed property value. That number is capped by the state. 
For a comparison, the current levy, which will expire in 2019, is $2.64. That means the local rate you're paying will be less than before. Vancouver has a long history of supporting local schools through its levies. The fact that our levies have been supported since 1964 without failure is nearly unprecedented in this region. Um, is, is just an exceptional testament to the, the commitment that our community makes to its children. If approved by voters, the Education and Operations Levy would remain in place for four years. Back to you. Thanks, Amanda. And that brings us to the second levy up for consideration. It would continue the use of technology in Vancouver classrooms. Here to explain it is Tara Cox. Tara? Thanks. Just like the Education and Operations Levy, the Tech Levy is not new. It will replace the existing Tech Levy when it expires in 2019. Let's take a look at some of the ways it benefits students and teachers. The first and most obvious way is that it would sustain tablets and computers in the classroom for each student. Since the first Tech Levy passed back in 2013, students from high school to third grade have each been assigned devices, which have changed how they learn. So technology has really opened up our ability to learn deeply and it's providing access and, and interest and engagement that really might not have existed before. That means better access to research materials, apps that test and reinforce important skills and knowledge, and round-the-clock access to school materials. It's not about the latest gadget, it's about giving students tools to succeed in the modern world. Modernizing our learning experience for students is about our students' future. It's not about what we experienced and it's not about our future, it's about their future and we need to pay attention to that. One major focus of emphasis is with this levy is that it pays for teachers' training so that they're also up to date on the technology. So teachers have to know what's out there, what's available, maybe not everything, but the things that really matter to what the skills they're trying to develop and the, and the content they're trying to teach. Here's a look at the numbers. The tech levy would cost 30 to 32 cents per $1,000 of estimated property value. As you can see, the rate steadily drops over the lifetime of the levy. If approved by voters, the tech levy would run through the year 2025 and will replace the existing levy, which expires next year. Back to you. Thanks, Tara. The levy election is February 12th, and that's when your ballot must be dropped off or postmarked. Any registered voter within the VPS boundary is eligible to vote. Unlike a bond measure, a simple majority of over 50% will pass these levies. And that brings us to a frequently asked question. What's the difference between a bond and a levy? Well, a bond is like a loan the community takes out to build new school buildings. In 2017, voters said yes to a bond measure in Vancouver, but a bond can't be used to pay salaries or other everyday expenses. That's what a levy is for. Again, Vancouver voters have consistently said yes to levies since 1964. This is a lot of information, we know, but if you have more questions, the district website is a great place to start. Head to vansd.org levy. You'll find the numbers, the formula to calculate how much you'd pay, frequently asked questions, and a whole lot more. There's also a link to submit a question if you don't find what you are looking for. Again, vansd.org slash levy. Time now for a reschools update, the latest on construction projects paid for with your bond dollars. Several school buildings are being replaced with the bond, but that doesn't mean other schools aren't benefiting. At Hauk Elementary, that means a brand new playground. After a ribbon cutting ceremony, kids went wild running out to try out the brand new play structure. This project was a dream for years for Hauk and now it's a reality. The new playground has a rubber mat surface instead of bark chips and its slides, swings and other play areas are accessible to students of all physical abilities. As you can see in this video, the kids are more than just a little excited. I love it. I'm excited about that we're going to play on it every day, I probably. The students know that the reason they have this new playground is that the community wanted to give it to them with the bond. People that don't even know us uh, uh, voted for that, for yes, and that's really nice because it's really nice to have a new playground now. I mean, as you can see, all the kids like it, so yeah, I'm super happy. I would say thank you for just 
doing the playground, even though you probably didn't know us at all. We all appreciate it, even if it took a long time. The playground has a treehouse theme. It has been years in the planning for Hauk staff, and they're almost as happy as the kids to have it finally in place for students. One new school building is taking shape on the WSU Vancouver campus. Robinson Construction shared video of the project to construct a school building for Vancouver iTech Prepper Preparatory. iTech Prep is a science, technology, engineering, and math magnet program for students grades 6 through 12. Currently, the middle school age students attend class at the Jim Parsley Center and the high schoolers are on the WSU campus. This new building will be the first united home for that school. You can see all the work being done in this time-lapse video to pour the foundation for the school. Students should start taking classes there about a year from now. And that's not the only building under construction. We're seeing great photos of the projects to construct new buildings for Ogden Elementary School and the McLaughlin Middle and Marshall Elementary campus. They're pouring concrete, putting up walls and laying sewer lines and a whole lot more. Those schools are set to open next fall. If you're a Twitter user and want updates on construction, just check out the ReSchools Twitter account. You can also get updates on the district's website, vansd.org slash reschools. There are schedules for construction, updates on what's already been done, and so much more. Check in to see what's happening to your neighborhood schools. The fall sports season is wrapped up and it was a great one for Columbia River High School. The girls soccer and volleyball teams made big splashes at state. In soccer, coach Philemon Afenegas led his team to a third place finish. The Chieftains didn't allow a single goal all postseason, losing one game on penalty kicks before taking the third place game. In volleyball, the Chieftains grabbed fourth place. Brianne Smedley coaches the team. Both the soccer and volleyball teams won their district titles before the state competitions. Congratulations to all of those student athletes. Vancouver Public Schools is a semifinalist in a national contest to sign kids up for financial aid for college. The district made a huge push this year with an initiative called First You Have to FAFSA, holding several events to get kids signed up for the free application for federal student aid. That form is how students get loans or grants for college. The earlier students apply, the more money there is available. VPS is recognized as one of 25 organizations across the U.S. for boosting its application rate. After just the first month, VPS seniors completed their FAFSAs at a 10% higher rate than other Washington students. At some schools, the application rate is more than double the state average. That is a huge improvement for us because as Vancouver, we have consistently um, been below the state. So for us to be above the state at this point in the year is pretty awesome. As a semifinalist in the National College Access Network Challenge, the district earned a $40,000 grant and is in the running to win a $100,000 grand prize. The grant money is going to train staff to sign up even more students. It's not too late to apply. You have until June, but sooner is better. Just ask your school counselors for help. A Skyview teacher is on the honor roll thanks to K103 Radio and Concordia University. Luke Glassett, who teaches AP History and coaches the robotics team, was nominated by a parent for recognition. Daryl Luther says Mr. Glassett is, quote, an excellent human and citizen. As part of the honor, which is handed out monthly by K103, Mr. Glassett earned a $500 gift card for school supplies, a scholarship from Concordia, $2,500 to buy classroom technology, and perhaps best of all, a catered lunch from Jersey Mike's for the teacher's lounge. The robotics team is part of the school science, math and technology department or SMT. The program works to give students hands on experience and they held one of their biggest events of the year right before Thanksgiving. Nick Vole was at Skyview High School for all of the action and has more. Nick. Outside of graduation, today is probably the biggest day of the year at Skyview High School. It's the science, math and technology department's annual tech day. The theme this year is the dark ages. Once a year, the SMT department takes over the hallways at Skyview with a crazy challenge for students. Today is all about tech, all about problem solving. Students are broken up into teams and everything they do is worth points. It's really important. We all want to win. Alexander is working on his team's trebuchet, a type of catapult. 
they need to launch erasers and rubber animals into a castle. It's all about teamwork. I talked with other group members too and they have everyone has a different design but there's some key features that I like from other people's designs that I incorporate in my own and there's other thoughts I had. Other group members are in the library following clues to find out who has the plague. Art is incorporated into the day as students design a team crest and memorize Chaucer and Shakespeare lines to recite for points. But the big challenge is the joust. Students build rigs that coast down ramps, trying to damage the other team's shield. Successful teams plan well and are able to make changes on the fly. We use every time wisely. We had to, we had to reassemble this a couple times, try some different prototypes, so it was a lot of work. But. We've learned how to um, innovate under pressure and how to um, just work together as a team. Everyone we talk to keeps coming back to teamwork, including the teachers. They're modeling for students what it means to pull together to get things done. The staff here starts planning this in August. Um, we have about eight staff running it today. We had another four or five people helping uh, support this and admin and the whole school comes together to make sure this whole process works. And while only one team gets the glory, the whole department claims Tech Day as a victory. It sort of brings all of us SMT students together. It's a really big deal. Everyone looks forward to it every single year, you know. It's, uh, you know, the entire school knows that we're doing it. They can see, oh, those kids are in SMT, you know. And it's like a family, you know. Just, we all embrace it. We all, we all really love this day, and it's always something we can always remember. Therefore, winner. Thank you so much, Nick. And this was Mr. Schmidt's first year coordinating Tech Day, and he did a great job. One of the students you saw in that story, Annika Epperly, just won an even bigger contest along with a classmate. Annika and Ojas V. Kamboch won the regional title in the Congressional App Challenge. We first brought you this story last month before they won. The pair designed an app to help younger kids take care of pet fish. The contest is meant to encourage bright students like Annika and Ojas V. to pursue careers in computer and science. Congrats to them both. Congrats also goes out to the Future Farmers of America team from Hudson's Bay High School. This fearsome foursome won the bronze at the National FFA Nursery and Landscape Career Development event in Indianapolis. The contest tests knowledge and skills in their field. From left to right, you see Ricky Ann Claypool, Rihanna Bone, Caitlin Hansen, and Natalie Klein. The team is coached by Steve Lorenz. Congrats to them all for their hard work. Those girls, as well as the Skyview SMT students you saw earlier, are in the district's magnet programs, and the time is coming to sign up for one of the many programs out there. At a special event on January 8th, students and parents can sample the many options out there for kids looking at potential careers. The Roosevelt Elementary Cafeteria will have representatives from every program on hand. There are full day and half day programs available in a wide variety of subject areas. The event starts at 5.30. It's time now for the big picture, our favorite image from social media. This one comes from Olga Kerr, who posted this photo of Skyview principal Jim Gray taking a photo of his students. The storm and arch rival Columbia River High School put aside their differences for a fundraiser to support the Foundation for Vancouver Public Schools. The two teams fielded boys volleyball teams who competed in a friendly match to raise money. What a great show of community spirit from both the Skyview and Columbia River students. Let's take a look at what's happening across Vancouver Public Schools, and this is what kids wait for all autumn long, the holiday break. This year, it's kind of late because Christmas Eve is on a Monday. The last day of school in December is the 21st, and school will remain out of session until January 7th. And that does it for us. We want to thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. For Amanda Richter, Tara Cox and Nick Bull, I'm Colleen Jamison. We'll see you next time inside Vancouver Public Schools.